Hello, I'm Shona Davis, the Actor and Connection, and today we have Mateo Keeley joining us from Jasper Hill Farm, Jasper Hill Cellars. Welcome, Mateo. Great to be here. Thank you for taking the time to introduce you to the cheese chat with us. Oh, yeah. Nothing I'd rather do than talk about cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the uh, gable end of our dairy barn at Jasper Hill. Um, and uh, Bailey Hayes and Blue Moon Rising. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Good to know. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, how maybe you can share with us how your farm started and what you do currently with the community. Sure. Um, well, I have some pictures of like early days and uh, I could give you a little brief history of uh, the business and uh, maybe I'll try uh, just sharing my screen here um, and we can get into it. Awesome. So <clears throat> there's a picture of the barn and uh, uh, green machine here, which is uh, houses uh, our wastewater, a botanical wastewater treatment system. We milk uh, 45 cows uh, in that barn since 2003, and uh, tragically, um, they all left the farm on uh, the last week of March this year. Basically, we had to like reduce the volume of milk coming into our business uh because of covid so we'll, we can talk about some of that later um hopefully they'll be back at some time soon we're recovering um but this is really what the uh barn uh up here on the upper right looked like when we uh when we bought the place uh, it has really been abandoned for you know um about 30 years before i uh took on uh took over and uh, my brother and Andy and I built the uh, cheese house, which is this structure here. We make cheese on the ground floor and uh, we used to ripen our cheese in the cellar beneath the production uh, space. And I live upstairs with my uh, wife and uh, two kids. So that's where I am now. Um, just need to fall down the stairs to get to work. Um, <laughs> So early days, we started this me back when I was uh, uh, younger and skinnier and uh, uh, making constant bliss. And we started uh, milking 15 Ayrshire uh, cows. Um, and we were joined by our wives, uh, Angie and Victoria. It's my brother, Andy, worked on the farm side of the business. Um, I made the cheese. My uh, sister-in-law, Victoria, ripened it. And Angie uh, uh, helped ladle Constant Bliss and did the bookkeeping. Um, you know, one of the things... Yeah. Um, she uh, pioneered the double-handed uh, double ladle, uh, which uh, is a uh, feat in itself, a, a, a dexterity there. Absolutely. Um, I have not mastered that yet. Yeah, it's uh, the double-handed ladle uh, uh, really kind of picks up the pace. Um, so part of like the origin story for us involves a call we got from Cabot Creamery and um, uh, to the summer of 2003 before we had sold a scrap of cheese. Uh, they asked us to make for them a private label English style bandage cheddar and we went through 18 months of R&D and uh, at the end of that R&D uh, phase they came collected the cheese and uh, took it back to a warehouse in Williston Vermont and tried to sell it and uh, it became apparent to us all that they were going to have some serious challenges um, first of all uh, nobody wanted to really buy cheese from Cabot. They're like, a, they're the big, you know, they're selling cheese to Walmart. Um, and their customers didn't really understand uh, the, the product. This like covered with mold and cheese mites. And um, their sales team didn't know how to sell it. And so all that cheese came back uh, to the sellers. 
uh, I'm sorry, to Jasper Hill Farm. Um, and uh, uh, we basically used the opportunity to change our model because we were a FedEx-based business up until that point, and we used Cabot Cloth Bound and the weight uh, from Cabot Cloth Bound to uh, build cold chain logistics. Um, and we opened up that distribution uh, like channel to our neighbors. And so we started aggregating cheese from other cheese makers and uh, uh, shipping uh, cheese out to Boston, New York, San Francisco, all over the country, uh, buoyed by the weight of Cabot cloth bun. We had 25 wheels of availability a month. It was not a lot of cheese, but it was enough uh, cheese in the aggregate to uh, to change our distribution model. And then in uh, July of 2006, uh, Cabot Clothbound won Best of Show at the American Cheese Society. Yep. That changed everything. Um, we had, yeah, we had 25 wheels of availability and that's enough money to really just make everybody angry, <laughs> turns out. And uh, so we took a step back. We almost uh, just quit the whole Cabot Clothbound thing. Um, and decided that we would use the opportunity to reinvent uh, um, the business model uh, and to use uh, this opportunity to build something kind of on a grand scale um, that would address some of the barriers to entry for uh, farmers looking at getting into the farmstead cheese business. And so what you're looking at here is um, uh, a floor plan of the sellers at Jasper Hill, and it's 22,000 square feet. And we've got basically seven vaulted tunnels that run back into the rock. And um, we hadn't really, uh, you know, finished with the design before we started digging the hole, and we didn't have the financing in place. We knew it was going to take a couple of years to build. And so we poured cement for uh, eight, no. 18 months, really. Uh, and so these are some pictures of, of uh, the vaults. This is uh, uh, vault four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, there's plenty of, uh, there's plenty of, of caves and, uh, you know, cellars in Sonoma. And, uh, I'm a little jealous of uh, what you guys have out there, too. So runs both ways. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, you know, at this point, uh, the cellars are pretty full. We're about 33 uh, feet uh, below the surface of the ground. And um, we're able to maintain um, constant temperature and, um, you know, manage our environment in uh, Vermont's climate, which is, which is rough. You know, uh, we get uh, down right. to minus 40 in the winter, and it can be 90 degrees in the summer. And you know, that's 130 degrees of temperature swing. So uh, like lower right, uh, you've got a picture of vault one, which is where we ripen Harbison and we're gonna taste some <laughs> Harbison in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. But look at stacks and stacks, miles and miles. <laughs> that's um, fantastic. So, yeah, another part of, uh, you know, what we're do, uh, doing like on a mission basis is uh, essentially, um, you know, leveraging uh, the market for cheese as a means of supporting uh, as many acres within a 15 mile radius of where we are as possible. And our model is basically, mm. uh, you know, build the pipeline to places where there's disposable income, put high value products into that pipeline and suck mm -hmm. cash out and redistribute it to uh, producers in a way that, um, will ensure that uh, there will be uh, the, the footprint of the farmer on our landscape will, uh, will remain. Uh, we live in a really challenging uh, dairy, uh, you know, um, climate. Um, there's lots of easier places to milk cows, more profitable places to milk cows, but it, it really is the footprint of the farmer on the landscape that defines the pastoral beauty of this place right. where we are. And in 2014, uh, we actually bought Andersonville Farm, uh, 
right before I was going into like a bankruptcy and we milked 200 cows at uh, Andersonville. I think two, 204 cows this morning. Oh, I guess that's a picture of me milking cows at Andersonville. <laughs> Uh, we also buy milk from uh, some of our neighbors. To, um, so pictured here is Tom Hill. Uh, so uh, Jasper Hill's cousin, Jasper Hill was a person, um, Arthur uh, was Tom's dad. And um, he, he, his farm borders the, um, uh, the bottom, uh, you know, at back 40. Um, so, On your property. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so we, we share we share a border and uh, uh, a fence line and he's been a, a fantastic neighbor. It's helped us out a lot. And then at this point we're able to help him uh, by paying uh, more than twice what the commodity uh, price for milk is. And in, oh, in so, doing, so important make sure right that, now. Uh, he can survive, uh, you know, outside of the commodity system. And right. that's the power of cheese. Um, now, in, uh, in 2015, we built a hay drying facility because dry hay is like the foundation of our raw milk cheese. Uh, the microbial ecology of raw milk is really the sum of the practices on a farm and how you feed your cows really informs like the base microbiology. And uh, so this is uh, technology that we uh, imported from Reggio Emilia. Uh, every cheese making region has an approach to drying uh, forage. And so these are uh, pictures of round bales that uh, we produced on um, some of the thousand acres that we manage for, for grass at this point. Um, and we feed our, our cows only dry hay through, uh, through the winter. That's a amazing. Of Kurt there, like probing, hey, Kurt. Uh, probing a bale. And, uh, you know, uh, basically, you know, what we're doing is harvesting the ecology uh, of like green grass and pasture, preserving it, and it becomes the foundation for flavor in, um, in Alpha Tolman, Bailey Hayes and Blue, uh, Winamere. Mm -hmm. It truly gives a seasonal flavor to the cheeses themselves. It does. It does. Um, you know, we've, uh, we're uh, committed to uh you know grazing and uh, it you know we've got some pictures of goats here uh, as well this is a new project we uh, started last year with uh, a couple from california who moved out here they're um, um ryan andrus and annie rowden who uh, uh built mm -hmm. the cypress grove yep. farm up in humboldt um <laughs> Uh, left Emmy and mm -hmm. moved out to uh, Hardwick, Vermont, and we bought a farm together. And uh, we're milking 300, uh, 300 goats uh, up in Congratulations. Up in Hardwick and yeah, making some mixed milk cheeses. Um, and uh, we are actually bottling some milk. So this is another mm -hmm. like example of uh, you know how uh, we're really uh, looking to uh, both bring young people. Uh, into our community, which uh, Vermont is one of the grayest states uh, in the country, um, in order to really kind of bring some vitality and life and economic prosperity to this rural corner of, right. uh, of Vermont. And thank pictures. you for doing that. That's really important right now. The succession plans and the next generation are really yeah. important in agriculture. It's not obvious that, uh, uh, you know, it can continue without a new uh, economic uh, model, right? Um, Correct. And at, at the end of the day, you know, Jasper Hill is a collection of uh, people, um, a community, and that's really what we're, uh, we're building uh, around cheese. So um, these, uh, some pictures of uh, like, production. Uh, we've got two different uh, cheese production facilities. Uh, here in the middle, they're mm -hmm. making uh, Harbison. Um, oh, excellent. And up, up uh, here on the upper left, that's uh, uh, Bailey, Bailey Hazen Blue. Uh, Bailey Hazen. Uh, getting molded, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, 
kind of uh, finishing up, one of the uh, things that uh, we've really kind of leaned into is the science uh, and uh, using science to defend uh, traditional practice and uh, mm -hmm. raw milk cheese. Um, we've had, uh, you know, uh, the good fortune of really having uh, access to collaboration with uh, some cutting edge microbiologists. Um, mm -hmm. What we're looking at here is the succession of the microbiology on uh, Bailey Hazen, Ryan. So uh, bacteria up top and uh, fungi down below. Um, we've started uh, making some uh, some cheeses, <laughs> some batches of cheese that have uh, no uh, added ingredients uh, from off the farm, uh, including all the microbes. Uh, which we've oh. isolated from our own production system, uh, turned into like a mother culture. Uh, right. We grew uh, penicillium rock 40 spores on uh, like overfired uh, rye loaf bread, uh, lo uh, ro <laughs> loaves of rye bread uh, from rye from uh, those grown next door. And, um, you know, trying to really create uh, some place based uh, cheeses. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're uh, all about like delicious cheese, but really the main ingredient is people. And uh, this was uh, some of us. That's great. Uh, year before last when Harbison uh, uh, cleaned up at ACS. So you did clean up that year. Congratulations to you on that. Yeah. And that your was, team. Uh, uh, first and second place at uh, uh, ACS. That was fun. Yeah. Now, before and, uh, you leave this, go ahead. Yeah, go for it. Uh, before you leave this topic, um, growing your molds, that's what we did. We collected our yeah. molds from a wine cave here in Sonoma. Yeah. And then recreated them with Dr. Moshe Rosenberg in UC Davis, and that's what we still use in all of our cheeses. Awesome. And it was a yeah. fascinating project with Mr. Igvella, which I miss every day. Yeah. But he helped me grow my own culture and he thought it was the craziest project project he'd ever heard of, but he would love what you're doing today. He would absolutely love it. I could say that. Well, it's, uh, it's really about uh, creating place-based foods generally uh, and cheeses that uh, uh, reflect, you know, uh, both the, the place and the people uh, that produce them. And, um, right. you know, that, that can't be globalized, no, right? It's, no, and what you're doing out there is amazing. And I'm, I'm glad that you had the time to talk to us today because what you're sharing with our listeners today is what people need to hear about the cheese. And it's not just commodity market, it's about sense of place and artisan cheesemakers making a difference in their own communities. Yeah, I describe uh, cheese as uh, being a, a powerful force for good. And, <laughs> I, uh, I might adopt that if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. It's, you see all these beautiful uh, harvestings down here? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Uh, Gorgeous. Can you share about your bark here? Because um, I yeah. don't know how you managed to cut your bark into 16 pieces in a wheel because I have not mastered that skill yet. I'm going to have to call <laughs> Zoe about that. <laughs> Uh, so we, um, um, harvest that, uh, the cambium. So it's the, it's the living part of the, of a spruce tree. Um, it's the layer beneath the bark against the heartwood, um, uh, that becomes the next ring on, um, on a log, uh, over the course of the winter. And so, uh, the uh, to harvest these, uh, we're actually cutting the tree down, uh, peeling the bark, uh, cutting the strips, uh, drying them over the course of the winter, and um, and then before they go on uh, on the cheese, uh, they're boiled for uh, about an hour. Actually, it's a little more than an hour, uh, which softens them up and sanitizes them. And uh, I was just going to ask, is that for softening or sanitation, but both? Both, yeah, uh, because they're it's they're brittle. It's like a hard, dry piece of like wood until mm -hmm. they get boiled and they soften up, 
um, and uh, we hold them on the cheese with a, a piece of rubber band, like, well, with a rubber band. And the <laughs> cheese actually attaches itself to, uh, uh, you know, to the, to the cambium. Right, you can and see it on the inside. Of flavor. It, it attaches with the mold and the yeah. can, candidum. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, oftentimes, you know, we'll just uh, like put a spoon in it. You know, it's uh, that's the way we could do that. Uh, we like it. We like to eat them. They're like a single serving, aren't they? <laughs> uh, my husband, when he saw how many I bought from Gordon at Rainbow Grocery, and I told him they were all pre-sold, he didn't like that answer. But yeah. He got to take one home. So Ben, would yeah. you like to display what you do with with Mateo's cheese? Mateo, please oh, yeah. meet my husband, Ben. Hey, Ben. So, so um, uh, Sean left me home unattended for a weekend. And I, had I was in New York City at the food show, by the way. Yeah. And, uh, I signed my blowtorch out tonight, like this one. And I started in the kitchen, and I started blowtorching different things, and having fun, and we had some goat cheese in there, so I, uh, Sean's goat cheese, actually, Lucy. And I use this, and uh, this, just to see, and just give it a little, brown it up, crisp it up, relay it, as I call it. Brief relay it, the general purpose of You got to try this at home, Mateo. Oh, I bet that smells pretty good. Oh, it, no, but I need one. Should I mail you one? I have several. Yeah. <laughs> Are you allowed to mail that sort of thing? Uh, kind of. <laughs> oh, look at but that. That looks gorgeous. Nice. Right? Look at that brulee yeah. on it. Yeah. And I peeled the bark off so we can cut it and look at this. And I'm telling oh, you, yeah. the Harbison is wonderful as it stands, yeah. but on a brulee, I could eat this with a spoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. Love it. And we had had people do that and just, I would cut, cut the wheels in half and then just use a spoon or a small knife to uh, yeah. uh, take it and smear it, if you will, onto the bread. So we yeah, cut your Harbison in half, yeah. you know, horizontally. Yeah. yeah. And then here's brulee half, and then here's for a cheese yeah. plate, the second half. Sweet. We're going to try that. Haven't, haven't done that I before. Hope. Oh, that's fantastic. I got, I got something to yeah. share with you then. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Is there any questions coming in from our listeners, Oz? Uh, yeah, there's a couple here. of comments. Yeah. So Emily had yeah, two things. Uh, back to the, uh, the cheese caves, if you will. Yeah. So, um, it sounds like Jasper Hill is a one-stop shop to produce your cheese, says Emily. And yeah. uh, Amy Sherman says, uh, how has the pandemic affected your business and how are you coping? And uh, hmm. Zoe uh, replied to a couple things here, but Mattel, I don't know if you want to address anything sure. verbally. Um, you know, the pandemic has been uh, really hard. Um, we're uh you know we had to like uh disperse our herd which first of all uh was like uh it had to be so land. hard uh, but we had we were in a position we had too much milk we don't have a, a contract with a co-op to pick our milk up all our milk gets turned into cheese um and we needed to take our like cash flow and our burn rate down uh, because we we're looking at a scenario in which about 50% of our sales just dropped off overnight. And um, every product we produce has its own individual story. Um, Bailey Hazen Blue turns out 70% uh, of our, our market for Bailey is food service, restaurants. <laughs> and um, uh, we've been able to really scale up our mail order uh, business. Um, and we're doing, you know, like double holiday sales um, in, you know, uh, April and, and May. Things are starting to slow down a little bit, but uh, that's really what's been keeping the lights on. It's a lot more work. There's a lot more cost. Uh, and but how about the packaging? It's a lot. You know, there, uh, uh, you know, there are weeks there we were getting a thousand, uh, shipping a thousand boxes a week. And uh, we were able to keep our team intact, which was, you know, the like main priority for, 
for for us is um, you know to really um, try and uh, you know maintain we have an awesome team and uh, like I said before like people are the main ingredient um, so that that's been a priority and we're actually hiring um, at this point because <laughs> um, congratulations the amount, well the amount of labor that's required to like cut and wrap all those little pieces of cheese we used to ship whole wheels of cheese out and now we're shipping a lot of cheese out and you know, six, eight, uh, 12 ounce pieces. So, um, you know, that's, we're feeling uh, you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's all good. Um, but we're looking at it a scenario where, uh, most of our customers and most cheesemakers, uh, make, uh, most of their profit for the year in the fourth quarter. And we're not out of the woods yet. You know, it's, uh, it's, um, it's going to be very, very stressful for cheesemakers if uh, we have another round of like social distancing in the fourth quarter, uh, because mm -hmm. that's really where everybody makes their money. So uh, yeah. we've got our fingers pr crossed, and we've started a we're we're starting a movement uh, called Victory Cheese. Uh, we've been part collaborating of that. with thank uh, you for being a leader friends all over the country. Um, to uh, curate a box of American artisan cheese. Um, yep. In order to create the opportunity for consumers to connect uh, through uh, you know, either restaurant or retailer to cheesemakers um, and to participate in, in the chain, 50 cents out of every food dollar uh, was spent at a restaurant uh, pre-COVID. And lots of us who, um, you know, really uh, relied on our relationships with chefs um, and chefs are really, uh, and their relationship to ingredients uh, really created the market for like products like ours, you know, have kind of been taken off the board and we need to figure out how to uh, create the opportunities for consumers to direct some of their food dollars to support some of the suppliers from the mm -hmm. restaurants uh, that they love. So that's really uh, what Victory Cheese is about. It's like a lightning rod uh, and uh, you know, a platform to tell the story of what um, you know, American cheesemakers are going through. And you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we know, we made our first batch of cheese uh, this week since the first week in March. Wow. And wow. that, that says a lot right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We had our first restaurant orders this week. And that yeah. spawned us to make well, our cheese, but we're producing 25% of our original amount. So yeah. that's a 75% deduction in cheese. Wow. Yeah, but what we're doing with the, with the victory box is, this week's victory box is your Harbison. Uh, Valley Ford Highway One cheese from Karen Morita. Cool. And our cheese. Great. Next next week will be Bob Will's. I always called it Montage, but I didn't know it was Montagu. Yeah. <laughs> I I thought it was a French name, but it's Montagu. Of course, being yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> so um, thanks to Gordon Edgar at Rainbow, I'm able to get these shipments in to us in Sonoma because, as you know, we're like a satellite. Yeah. Even though we're known for the wine, we're like this abyss, abyss of shipping arrangements. Yeah. So, but That's thankfully we are able to get the Harbisons. We're getting a Car Valley in from Sid Cook. We're getting some Rally cheese from Chris Rally, the Dunbarton Blue, and some Red Rock. Great. Uh, and I think my new favorite project right now, and uh, I'll have to call you after this, is uh, we're doing a collaboration with Ari at Zingerman's. Awesome. We harvested some peppers from Boonville yeah. in Mendocino County. And yeah. we shipped them out to Ari and we're gonna make a pimento pepper goat cheese. Great. Yeah, that's and cool. So collaboration seems to be the way and I don't know if you've heard about those. We did one with a uh, Briar Rose up in Oregon. Yeah. We harvested the fennel pollen from Sam McGonum at Byright Farm. Yeah. And made a cheese with her which she has beautiful guernsey kalmuk which you would love to get your hands on 
That, yeah. That Guernsey cow milk is like nothing else. Yeah, it's rich. So Well, that's cool. Uh, so there's a question here about uh, with the constant demand from consumers for what's new, how are you able to maintain the staples in your lineup consistently uh, without uh, and, with, and being able to respond to innovations that you do? Um, anything new on the horizon or on the chopping block? It's a really good question. And, you know, it's a, <laughs> a question that is like uh, uniquely American, like what's new. We call it new itis. Uh, it's an American <laughs> affliction. Um, and the way that we usually uh, respond to that is like, well, we have a new batch of Bailey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like winemaking, we have a vintage. Uh, we have a vintage every day. Um, so mm -hmm. we we sell cheese by selling batches um, and we we taste them um, and sell them like individually because um, there's different uh, profiles and there's a cheese for everyone so that's par that's part of it and we're always looking on, at working on on something new this past year we launched the three new uh, mixed milk cheeses um, mm -hmm. milk from bridgman hill farm the uh, <laughs> goat and cow uh, cheese and um, you know uh, we try not to like, uh, you know, launching a new cheese, creating a new cheese, discovering a new cheese is a huge amount of work. So huge we're, endeavor. Yeah, it's huge. So we try and like keep it, uh, you know, manageable in that way. But uh, I think during COVID, I think a lot of us are just trying to sustain our previous labels and be consistent yeah. with our production. Yeah. And I know. Um, and you know, I grew up with Igvella, but I always quote him because he was, he would say, if somebody asked him, are you going to make a new cheese? He's like, why would I have dry Jack? I make it every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what more do you need? <laughs> and I always loved that answer. Like he just yeah. cold called it. Like I make it every day. Would you like to try yesterday's batch? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And so please adopt that line. Like, okay, yeah. tomorrow's cheese will yeah. be brand new to you. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> And it's, it's a challenge because people do want new, but right yeah. now for me, I want to bring back our current marketplace for our original cheeses. Yeah. And even and though I'm creating a new one and you probably are too in your head, I know we all are, but I think we're all on sustainability right now, financially, fiscally and sustainability. Yeah. And there are cheeses in our collection that do most of the heavy lifting. And you know our business um, really succeeds or fails uh, based on uh, how well those cheeses are are doing. And um, you know there was an ACS uh, economic survey that showed a negative correlation between the number of yeah. cheeses uh, that are produced and profitability. Right. I so read the most that profitable. With yeah, the most profitable businesses actually only make one or two cheeses and yep. if you're making like eight or nine cheeses like we are it's a lot harder to make money <laughs> so yeah that's that's the other side of it that's the other side but uh in your harvesting before i dip in and taste it did you notice how the beautiful uh ooziness on this platter right here oh yeah it's gorgeous yeah. and i bet the like the the burnt uh, you know the flavors are probably awesome in there oh it accentuates the flavors of the milk the yeah. proteins absolutely so i encourage yeah. anyone who's listening to get one of these we found this at a sushi bar so it's a yeah. sushi grade so it doesn't give off the fuel taste yeah and uh so i'll i'll include it in the post email to everyone the brand not that i'm not yeah. here to sell it but you get no fuel flavor when you're brulee the cheese awesome <laughs> so I'll be able to get more Harbison and more Jasper Hill sellers through Rainbow Grocery Co-op. Thanks to Gordon and you. Thanks, Gordon. And thank you for letting me ponytail on his orders. Oh, yeah. And uh, Absolutely. Anything else? Um, I got to tell you, though, before we leave, we saved our grange yet one more time. Awesome. Yep. We made it through Imminent Domain. We made it through the Highway 12 redevelopment. We made it through when you were here at the Cheese Conference with the uh, second Imminent Domain. and finally it's now an ownership of a local nonprofit. oh that's um that's amazing it's pretty amazing 
and just got a new paint job and put a community mural up, which includes all the agriculture. And uh, it's, it's been really fun. That's, that's great. Our Grange building is still standing, but it-, it That's uh, good, remember I was there. Yeah, <laughs> it's still there. Standing. <laughs> still standing, but uh, need, uh, need some more farmers. Um, yeah. And we're working on that part. Okay, well, I'll follow up with what we did and let you know. Well, awesome. well thank you, Mateo, for your time and your che beautiful cheeses. Be sure to tell Andy and your wives hello, please. Absolutely will, and, and uh, hope we get to see your you in entire California. Team. Yeah. Uh, our door is open to you, and we'll take you to some caves. How's that? Deal. It's a deal. deal. Well, thank you again, Mateo, for your time, and I appreciate it, and I'll send you the follow-up email. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.